Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today we're going to introduce the extensive form of games and the concept of perfection. As you'll recall, most of the games we've discussed thus far have had multiple equilibria. For example, we have previously worked with Selton's game, and we discover that there are two equilibria here. There's the up-left Nash equilibrium and the down-right Nash equilibrium. And if you think back to some of our other games like Stag Hunt and Chicken and Battle of the Sexes, then you might recall that all of these games have actually had multiple Nash equilibria. So an important question in game theory is figuring out which equilibrium the players will actually play. It's one thing to say that there are multiple Nash equilibria, it's another thing entirely to say that this is the equilibrium the players are actually going to play in practice. And to narrow our conclusions, we're going to have to introduce some purifications to Nash equilibrium. Now I should point out that we call this Selton's game because of a guy named Reinhard Selton, and he's the guy who came up with the idea. And it ended up being such an important finding that he won a Nobel Prize partially because of this game. And basically what he did was conceive of the game as though it looked this way, which we sometimes refer to as Selton's horse. We call this the extensive form of a game. That's in contrast to this, which is the strategic form or matrix form or normal form of a game. And we see something pretty interesting if we isolate player two's move. If she actually had the opportunity to make a play, she's definitely going to go left. Going right nets her nothing, but going left gets her one point. So she'll want to move left here if she ever actually has the opportunity to make a play. Now player one can use this knowledge to his advantage. He knows that if he plays up, player two will play left. Anticipating this, he will definitely want to go in that direction. If he plays down, he'll only get two. But if he plays up, he knows player two will play left, which nets him three points. Since three is better than two, player one chooses up. So that actually gives us a unique solution here. Player one plays up and player two plays left. Essentially, we have found that this down right equilibrium here in the original game requires player two to make a threat which just isn't credible. Consequently, this down right Nash equilibrium isn't very sensible, so we have to throw it out. And that's the general idea behind perfection. Players can only do things that they would want to do if ever given the opportunity. That is, they can only really make credible threats. And so this concept of perfection disallows the use of incredible threats, which in turn gives us more precise solutions. And in the next few lectures, we will further analyze the extensive form of games and how to find their subgame perfect equilibria.